Hello everyone and welcome. We're pleased that you have joined us for today's webinar introducing Valo for GMSYS 3D. My name is Bruce Korn. I am the Energy Industry Lead for Geosoft and I'm hosting today's webinar. Today we will be introducing Valo, our new high performance computing capability for inverting gravity data. Valum works within the GMSYS 3D workflow and is optimized to improve seismic interpretations at the base of salt. I would like to introduce you to our presenters today. First, we have Ian McLeod, our Chief Technologist, and he will introduce you to Valum and provide an overview. Tarona Spithawala, our Technical Lead for Geophysical Inversion, will follow Ian with the Valum demonstration for you. And then finally, Tom Popowski, our Technical Product Manager for GMSYS and Valum, We'll join in on the questions and answers after Taronish finishes the demo. So first up is Ian. Thanks for joining us today, Ian. The floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Um, and a special thanks for everyone who's taking some time today, and thank you for the time. We, we really do appreciate it. Um, anyway, as Bruce said, I'm Ian McLeod. I'm the Chief Technologist at Geosoft. And now while I've spent um, most of my career here with Geosoft, um, most of my geophysical experience and expertise has been in the area of processing, modeling, and interpreting gravity and magnetic data. Now, in energy exploration, uh, gravity and magnetic techniques are an important complement to seismic methods, and um, we're seeing an increasing importance of, uh, of these techniques as the uh, exploration challenges we face in energy get ever deeper and ever more complex. Now our role as potential field interpreters is to help develop the best possible basin models that explain both the seismic data and the potential field data. I assume most of you are familiar with Geosoft and what our main platforms are, but I'm just going to take a second just to walk through the main areas that we are uh, helping explorers work. Um, and first and foremost is the OASIS Montage platform. Uh, this is an important base system that is widely used for gravity and magnetic mapping and processing. It's one of the industry standards really for uh, processing potential field data and it's widely used in, in the energy world. Now, many years ago um, we took on the GMSYS profile modeling technology to complement the, uh, the mapping and processing capabilities of OASIS Montage and this uh, allowed uh, interpreters to work in two dimensions and start to model quite complex environments from a two-dimensional point of view, often uh, lining up with two-dimensional seismic lines and building up gravity and magnetic models that uh, start to complement what we're learning from the seismic data. This product has been around uh, and been maturing and evolving for over 20 years now, and it, it's extremely widely used. More recently, um, we've been developing and, and have had in, uh, in use the, uh, the GMSYS 3D product, and this product allows people to work in full 3D uh, for modeling the third dimension, more complicated uh, geology yet again, and we're going to be talking a bit more about that in this talk today. And finally, we have the Geosoft DAP server technologies, which uh, a number of our customers use for uh, managing their uh, internal libraries of gravity and magnetic data, and uh, uh, supporting the distribution of that data to the exploration interpretation teams as they require it. Now today we're going to be talking about Vallum, and Vallum is a, um, uh, as Bruce introduced, it stands for Voxel Assisted Layered Earth Modeling, and it's a capability that we have integrated into the GMSYS 3D workflow. And so we're going to turn our attention to that. Now, I do want to go back to the, uh, the genesis of of the, the work we've been doing with uh, GMSYS 3D, and it, it began about five years ago. And we recognize that one of the most important challenges that um, seismic explorers or uh, energy explorers were facing uh, was in basins in, um, where we have salt. The like Gulf of Mexico is, is a prime example of that, but there's many basins around the world that are faced with uh, um, a salt uh, reality inside the sedimentary section. And this simple cartoon shows you a fairly typical scenario uh, where we, we will often have a, a mobile, a shallow mobile salt layer overlaying uh, sediments and then uh, deeper yet again would be the, the, uh, the mother salt um, at depth. And it turns out that um, this sedimentary section uh, beneath this shallow salt is, is very prospective for oil 
and it is a, an important target in oil exploration. Now the challenge with seismics, um, you see on the right, here we have a um, fairly typical uh, 2D seismic section um, over uh, what we know is a salt, uh, salt body, and the seismic interpreters have interpreted a, uh, a top of salt reflector. And the top of the, the shallow salt is, uh, is usually very clear in the seismic section, and so there's a lot of confidence in the location of that top of salt. Where we face a challenge is in the, uh, the seismic illumination beneath the salt. In, in this image, you can see that um, to the left of the salt, we have uh, very good uh, illumination and reflection in the sedimentary section, similarly to the right of the salt. But as we enter the area beneath the salt, the, the seismic signal uh, is challenged with showing us what is there. Now it's important to know um, how much salt we have, how thick this is, does it go to great depth or is it quite shallow, uh, because what we're really looking for are targets like this within that section. And before we go to, to drill quite a deep and expensive hole here, we have to have as much confidence as possible in, uh, in knowing what risk is involved in, in, in what is here. So that was the, the challenge we, we wanted to make a significantly um, or, or significantly improve from a gravity interpreting point of view, and that's the challenge we took on five years ago. So let's switch uh, to have a quick look at GMSYS 3D and understand how or the approach we take with GMSYS 3D to, to the modeling problem. Uh, first and foremost, GMSYS 3D is is a layered earth modeling application. Um, and by that I mean that what the interpreter does is they build up a stack of layers. Each layer has a, a top surface and a bottom surface. And the volume between the top and the bottom surface represents a density domain. And in the modeling uh, problem you're basically building up a stack of these density domains. Within each density domain, uh, the interpreter can uh, assign a constant density, or they can assign a, 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 a more complex density distribution that can vary both horizontally and vertically. Um, also, within GMSYS 3D, it's important that we be able to display seismic sections, some drilling data, anything that we're, that we're going to need to help us constrain and understand this model needs to be brought into the visualization so we can build up the model and make sure it's consistent with all the information that we have. Now once the interpreter has built up a, a stack of, uh, of densities and, and the best known understanding of the density distribution, um, we calculate what the gravity field would look like that comes from that particular model. And we basically compare that gravity field to the observed gravity field. And the job of the interpreter is to continue to adjust that model until that model agrees with, uh, with the Earth's field. So this is an iterative approach. Um, we iteratively refine the model and we test it to fit the data, refine it, test it, until we come up with something that we think is both physically reasonable and agrees with the data. But there's a couple of important challenges with this approach. Uh, first among them is, is that there's a strong interpreter bias early on in the process. And so the, the, that bias, um, or one of the, the realities of, of the gravity uh, technique is that um, there are many distributions of density that will produce exactly the same gravity anomaly. And as a result of that, there's a lot of um, flexibility for interpreter bias to, to change things in the model that may or may not have any difference on the gravity field. Um, but because of the bias in place, they, they it becomes a self-fulfilling reality that if I put it in the model, it fits the gravity, that you jump to the conclusion that that's correct. Um, so what we wanted to do is address this, uh, this early bias problem by um, coming up with a mathematical and physically sensible way to come up with a density distribution that has a, um, a minimum of bias, is the simplest possible density distribution to explain the gravity, and is still physically reasonable. So that was our, our challenge, is to come up with an automatic way to do that and remove the bias. The second challenge with this approach is that um, the iterative manual approach is that it's very complicated and it's time consuming. 
Now, it's always better to have less complexity and, and reduce time, so there's benefits in simply being more efficient. But in the case of, of modeling complex um, uh, basin geometries and geologies, the actually the biggest cost of the complexity and time consumption is that it takes away from the time that should be spent or could be spent collaborating with the seismic team or other collaborators on the project. And, and we believe strongly that the value of the final model that you come up with is directly proportional to the amount of time you have to iterate back and forth with the seismic interpreta interpretation team, back to the potential field team, and, and, and refining the model to make sure that it's fitting everything that's known and understood. The more time you can spend in this collaboration process, the better the model you're going to get. So what we wanted to do was, was to minimize the amount of time coming up with the very first plausible um, model, and that's what, what we've addressed here. Now, five years ago, um, uh, Dr. Rob Ellis uh, joined Geosoft, and uh, Rob brought with him um, about 20 years of, of experience in uh, the development of the most recent technologies for, um, for mathematical and physical inversion, automatic inversion of complex 3D voxel geometries. This development has been ongoing and continues to go in the industry. And when Rob joined us five years ago, we, we set up the challenge to take everything Rob had, had learned over 20 years and let's build the next generation of inversion technologies that are going to carry us long into the future. And um, we decided to focus on the problem of this sub-salt problem, which is particularly challenging and, and particularly important to the energy industry. So with that focus, we started on the development of, of a new generation of, of inversion technologies. Um, now, as we did that, um, there's, with respect to the salt problem, there are two particular challenges that uh, we had to advance uh, over others. One is the ability to uh, define constraints and, and, and really well-defined constraints. Because in, in the petroleum case, we actually know quite a bit. We know the top of the, uh, generally we know the top of the salt. Uh, we have a pretty good density model around the salt that we get from the 2D or 3D seismics. Um, we have quite a bit of uh, information about various layers in the model come from the, the seismic interpretations. Now, all of these things are, are known constraints for the model, and we had to be able to build a well-constrained model. Um, and, and what we're really asking of the voxel inversion is to solve for what we don't know. So in this simple example you see here, um, we actually have a fault constraint that's come in here. And by simply saying that in this model we have this fault, uh, the inversions are able to produce a model that can, can honor a known fault like this and then calculate the density distribution away from that fault. A second challenge we had, um, had to overcome was to deal with this non-uniqueness problem that there, there's many density distributions that can produce the same, um, the same gravity response. And one of the consequences of that is that voxel inversions will tend to smear the density across boundaries. But clearly in the salt case, we know we have salt or sediment. It's one or the other. So what we're actually looking for is quite a sharp boundary between one density domain and another. And for that, we developed and patented a, a new technique for focusing the result such that we were able to now focus, and you're going to see more of that a bit later, focus the where exactly the edge of this density contrast is going to be, and um, then have confidence that that edge can represent the simplest possible uh, salt sediment boundary to explain the data. So those two things, um, uh, being able to build in constraints and constrain our model, asking uh, a vellum to solve the problem for the unknown, and focus our solution to show us the edges of, um, of the salt boundary. Now, another problem um, that we had to, to overcome is that these voxel uh, inversions um, are very CPU intensive. The models are large. Uh, the compute power required to do full 3D inversions like this is, is very high. And frankly, this computing power required is simply not available to most interpreters. So to solve that problem, what we've turned to is uh, high performance computing in the cloud. And, and we've implemented uh, these inversion technologies in a full cloud environment so that anybody who's using Valum uh, or GMSYS 3D and runs Valum, 
they will get their own uh, high performance computer to, to run that inversion on. And uh, Taronis is going to demonstrate that for you in a moment. But this is also a key part of the technology. And this is something that only started to emerge about five years ago. So what we're looking to do is, again, combine the, the most recent uh, and, and emerging technologies in 3D plus this new capability that we all have to access high performance computing. So when we turned back and looked at GMSYS 3D, we, we also had to do work on advancing GMSYS 3D to, to handle uh, um, a broader set of, of input data sets. And, and we think of this as a hybrid approach to 3D modeling. Um, first of all, we've added the ability to import uh, full 3D surfaces, which we call geosurfaces. Now these geosurfaces might be um, one idea that the seismic interpreters have of where they think uh, is the, out, uh, the starting outline of the salt, or there may be other sources of information that, uh, from drilling perhaps, or other things where we're, uh, we're able to define a, a basically a, a volume surface that defines something in our model. So we can import these into GMSYS 3D and, and display them together with the model that we're building to help the interpreter refine that model uh, as required to make sure that it fits or doesn't, looking out for where it doesn't fit that model. Next, we're able to bring in layered relief grids, and, and these are the basic building blocks of building up the layer stack. And so in this particular example, we're showing a, a reflector for the top of the deep salt. And so that can be brought in, and, and that's an important uh, constraint in the model. And we've also added the ability to bring in full 3D density cubes. And uh, these density voxels uh, generally are, are calculated uh, by the 2D or 3D seismic group who are producing uh, what they believe is a density distribution model. And we can take that distribution model and include it in the Vallum uh, uh, product to both look at and to help develop the workflow. And finally, of course, we, we need a really accurate bathymetry uh, model because the um, the water, ocean bottom density contrast uh, has a, a very large effect on the, the gravity model. And so we, we have to be able to bring this in. And we've also developed technologies to properly model this uh, by using a smooth surface rather than a, a blocky surface and, and get that, uh, that model accurate. So you have a minimum of impact of side effects from uh, the bathymetry grid in the model. So now I'm just going to walk through a couple of slides just, just to take a step back and give you a, a sort of the big approach to, to, to Vallum and, and how it basically works. And I'm going to use the um, steam density model. Um, this is the uh, uh, a synthetic model that was built for, uh, to synthesize what uh, is understood about the density distribution and salt distribution in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, the model was developed by the SCG and quite specifically for people to be challenged and to be working on various techniques in both seismic and potential fields for modeling complex sedimentary and salt scenario we have in the Gulf. Um, so this is an excellent data set for us to have a look at and see how Vallum performs in, in dealing with this sort of problem. Now what you're looking at here is a cross section through, um, through a, uh, a salt body in, uh, in the C model. Uh, this the, the salt is represented by this lime green, and you can see quite a significant volume of salt here. You can also see a, a sliver of salt or a thinner amount of salt in, in this uh, unit here, and you can see a, um, uh, a deep salt layer at the bottom here. So this is synthetic. Uh, we, we know everything about this model. We can see it. We can calculate what the, uh, the gravity field would be from the real data. And then we can think about what we would be facing in uh, had we gone out and not been able to see this and perform a seismic survey and a, uh, and a gravity survey. Now the expectation is that um, the seismics would have challenges uh, potentially beneath these, these salt layers. We're confident that the seismic uh, method would be able very confidently to see the top reflector the top of this salt layer and be able to see the top of this salt layer. Um, what we're less confident in is the seismic uh, method's ability to understand where, where the bottom of this layer is. Perhaps this goes all the way down to the deep salt or it's quite thin. Similarly, this side could also be quite thin or it could also go all the way down to, uh, to the deeper layer 
or something in between. And, and this is where we wanted to turn to gravity and the Vallum technique and say, well, uh, using GMSYS 3D and Vallum, can you come up with the simplest possible starting model that explains uh, the results? So the first step in the process with GMSYS 3D is to uh, first uh, flood the um, uh, or this uh, unknown area with a reasonable density model. Um, in this case, we um, all we've done is we've taken the salt out and we've done a flood of the background density. So sh had there not been any salt here, this is the density model that you would see. Now I've left in um, the, uh, you can see an outline of, of the interpreted top of salt, uh, but beneath, but we've completely removed the salt from the gravity model. And what we do is we calculate the gravity field that we would get from a model like this, which is all density, no salt, and we compare that gravity model to the gravity field that was actually observed. And um, as in this case, we know there's salt, or if there is salt, there will be a difference. So the difference between this model result and the observed gravity uh, model result, uh, we are going to assume that that difference is due to salt. And, and when we turn to Vallum, we are basically constraining the model. We're saying that we, we know everything in this area. We know where this top of salt is. Um, we know the density distribution here. And we're asking v Vallum to simply fill in the salt that's required in these areas beneath the salt that would be required to fit the data. And for that, we turn to the cloud. We run Vallum. And Vallum comes back, and in this case, this is the result we get from a Vallum inversion. And we believe this is the simplest possible within the noise uh, uh, settings that we put in. So here, uh, with regard to this top body, you can see the actual base of salt through here. And Vallum has uh, produced a salt volume that looks something like this. From a gravity interpreter's point of view, this is in fact a pretty darn good result. This is the, the, the kind of thing we were hoping for to get within uh, this sort of, of resolution. We, we do, the Vallum technique has confirmed we have this volume of salt. Clearly it's underestimating the depth here, so this is the kind of resolution in an ideal case that, um, that you can expect is, is about this, this source of error. And here we're overestimating the, the depth a little bit. Also interesting, over on the left is this, this thin area. And you can see that Vallum has not put any salt in at all. And what's that saying? Well, what it's really saying is that actually we don't require any salt here to satisfy the observed gravity. It doesn't mean there isn't any salt there, but if, if there, it is there, there's so little of it that we don't, it doesn't have any effect on the gravity. So this, in fact, is a good result because it supports that the salt here, if it's there, it's likely very thin. It's less likely that it would be extending to, to any great depth, because if it did, we would see a little bit more uh, like this. So in our view, this, this was a very good result, and it got us to an initial interpretation uh, relatively quickly. And now the, uh, the interpretation team can start to take these results and uh, use them together with the seismic team, either to, to better plan a, a seismic survey, or to start to improve on the um, on, on other constraints in the inversion. So with that, I'm, I'm actually going to turn this over now to uh, to Taronish. Um, Taronish is our technical lead for geophysical modeling. Taronish works closely with GeoSoft customers who use 3D inversion and modeling in their exploration work. And Taronish is going to walk through a um, uh, an actual demonstration of GMSYS 3D and Vallum. Thank you, Ian, and thank you to our viewers for staying tuned for the live demonstration portion of today's webinar. We'll begin within the OASIS Montage environment, which is GeoSoft's core platform for geoscientific processing and modeling. The GMSYS 3D extension runs within OASIS Montage for full integration with all the geological, geochemical, and geophysical tools offered by GeoSoft. In this way, you can integrate multidisciplinary datasets using databases and grids, images and maps, as well as cross-sections, or whole logs and reports, and 3D voxels and ISO surfaces.
The latest version of GMSYS 3D offers layered earth model building in a full 3D environment. Layers and bodies can be defined using elevation grids, T-surfaces, voxels, and density depth tables. You can add gravity and magnetic surveys for forward and inverse calculations for structure and physical properties. You can also extract slices from your model in 2D or create a 3D voxel representation of your layered earth. The model I'll use to demonstrate Vallum is a version of the 1996 SEG research model. Here's a voxel representation of the density. The top of salt's relief surface is shown here with colored elevation, and the surrounding sediment and seawater density is visible in the background. This density voxel was calculated by converting a seismic velocity cube. I will now construct this model in the GMSYS 3D workspace using relief surfaces to define boundaries and the density voxel to assign physical properties to each layer. The top of the model, or sea surface, has a constant elevation of 0 meters and a salt water density of 1.03 grams per cubic centimeter. The sea floor is defined by a bathymetry grid and the density beneath this layer is defined by a density voxel. When adding layers to GMSYS 3D, they must span the lateral extents of my model in order to forward calculate the gravity or magnetic response. Therefore, I have expanded the top of salt elevation grid. Returning to our voxel representation, you can see here the outline of our top of salt surface in black superimposed on the expanded grid. For the salt body, I have specified a constant density of 2.2 grams per cubic centimeter in my GMSYS 3D model. In my first pass at determining the base of salt, I begin with zero salt in the starting model. I simulate this by defining my base of salt layer with the same elevation surface as my top of salt. When I run my volume inversion, I'll constrain the salt to stay within the polygon that encompasses the actual top of salt grid. Below this layer, to the bottom of the model, the density is defined using the density voxel. Here is a cross-section through the model showing the density distribution. Note that since there is no salt in this starting model, I ensured that the sediment density was continued smoothly throughout. I can calculate the gravity response of this starting model and observe the misfit. Since I took caution to ensure that the remainder of my model was as accurate as possible, the misfit is largely concentrated in the area within the top of salt, which is outlined by this white polygon. In order to effectively recover the base of salt from the Vallum inversion, it is important to minimize the misfit elsewhere in the model, which can be caused by modeling inaccuracies or unaccounted processing in the observed data. Once I'm satisfied with the misfit in the remainder of my model, I can proceed to perform a Vallum inversion on the base of salt layer. The Vallum inversion tool is found within GMSYS 3D, and once a model is created, Vallum can be used to run an inversion on the base of salt. The computation is performed using the Vallum cloud service, and a base of salt layer is returned to GMSYS 3D and is incorporated into the model. I'll start by giving my Vallum inversion a unique descriptor. And since I am confident in my top of salt relief surface and the extents of my polygon, I can limit the inversion to only my area of interest. I can constrain the horizontal extent of my base of salt within my area of interest polygon by checking this box here. Vallum has also been optimized by default to return sharp layer boundaries by utilizing an IRI focus factor of 3. Once I click Create, Vallum optimizes the model for base of salt inversion by creating a series of constraints. The proprietary Vallum inversion package is then sent securely to the Microsoft Azure High Performance Computing Service in the cloud. Once the inversion is uploaded, you are free to work on other projects close Oasis montage, and even shut down your computer. The next time you open your GMSYS 3D model, 
the inversion result is added to the model space as an alternate relief surface. The alternate relief surface is timestamped and added to your GMSYS 3D model for viewing. You can compare the starting model layer to the recovered layer by switching between them in GMSYS 3D. Here was the base of salt prior to the inversion. It was equal to the top of salt surface and therefore represented a zero salt thickness. Here is the base of salt after the inversion. It has a lower elevation in this region than the top of salt and therefore represents some salt thickness. To validate that the inversion result improved my overall model, I can make it the active relief surface and perform a forward calculation to observe the change in my misfit. I've prepared a map here that shows the misfit grids before and after the Valum inversion. Both are colored using the same linear scale. Recall that before the Valum inversion, when there was no salt in the starting model, the misfit was small, about 2 milligals, but localized within the region of the salt body. After the inversion, the misfit has reduced. It shows that Valum was able to recover a model that satisfied the observed gravity data. I can export and display the GMSYS 3D model as a cross-section across the salt body. The top of salt and the Valum recovered base of salt are shown with black lines, and the true base of salt is shown with a dashed white line. In this view, you can see where the top and bottom of salt boundaries were extended to fit the 3D model. Both boundaries are extended such that the salt is limited in a lateral extent. Limiting the inversion to the area of interest polygon ensures that salt does not bleed into unwanted parts of the model. The observed and calculated gravity response is shown above. and The inversion result was deemed successful after fitting the default error tolerance of 5% of the standard deviation of the observed data. The Valum recovered base of salt is a good result. The inversion was able to successfully model the dipping extension as well as the thin edge of the salt body. In some regions, salt thickness was overestimated and in others it was underestimated. This is an indication of the non-uniqueness of potential field modeling and should remind the interpreter that input parameters have an impact on the end result. We can also view the results in 3D to better appreciate the Valum inversion. The Valum recovered salt body is shown with green voxels and the true salt body is shown with pink voxels. As we saw in the section map, the inversion was able to recover the salt body quite well. Recall that this result was calculated using a starting model with no salt thickness. As a first pass, the Valum inversion was able to give a reasonable estimate of the thickness, lateral extent, and dip of the salt body. This proves to be a useful guide for seismic depth migration, and Valum can also be used to fine-tune or validate existing salt models from seismic processing in conjunction with gravity field observations. Thank you for watching this live demonstration. I'll now hand it back to Bruce for the question and answer period. Okay, thank you Taronish. I hope you found uh, that helpful, Ian's overview and Taronish's demo. Now it's time to answer your questions. I would like to mention a couple of things to you. First of all, we are planning to make Valum commercially available early in the new year. Secondly, in the meantime, we're working to develop our commercial offering. So if you're interested in participating in the early adopter program for Valum, please let me know. And now, uh, I will hand the mic over to Tom, who will read and answer your questions. And then I will come back at the, at the end of the question and answer period to close things off. It's all yours, Tom. Thank you, Bruce, and thank you all for sticking around to the end of the presentation and the questions. First question here is, could you please uh, give us an idea of the amount of time spent to create a Valum inversion volume? So I am assuming that means Take, given a GMSYS 3D model, how long does it take to produce the actual inversion model, uh, which is a matter of a few minutes before the inversion is launched, and at that point, 
your desktop is free to continue doing other work. So how long it takes for the inversion to actually run is on the order of 10 to 15 minutes, assuming resources are available right when you start. Uh, that's pretty typical for the size volume we're doing here. All right, there was a question just to clarify um, the difference between a layer grid and a geosurface. So a grid is a sub-horizontal surface that is single-valued in Z for any given X, Y. So it's, it represents sub-horizontal surfaces fairly well, but cannot represent more convoluted surfaces. So a geosurface is a triangulated mesh that can represent arbitrary open or closed 3D surfaces. Currently, we support only the closed 3D surfaces in the model. And GoCAD T surfaces are an example, another example of a triangulated surface. Um, how did the expansion grid for the salt get created? And what's the rationale for the deeper blue relief outside the known boundary? So GMSIS 3D uses FFT calculations for the subhorizontal layers and thus they need to be continuous to the edges of the model. When you're creating the model and you import an incomplete surface, it will automatically fill that using one of the GSoft default layer fill, uh, grid fill options. You're also able to, if you know that you're going to need to fill, you can manually fill the grid using one of a variety of techniques to give the most pleasing uh, fill in your opinion. But to be clear, that blue deep area is represented, as you can see in the visualization on the screen now, the deepest part of the salt extended clear down to that blue area. And so in order to create a smooth surface, you need to add a little bit more blue in that area. Okay. Uh, do you fix the deep salt gravity contribution? So yes, the, the deeper salt or the mother salt is an input into the 3D model. That's one of the constraints, basically. If you build that into the model, we take it into account. And the inversion only allows you to invert on a single surface at a time. The gravity data doesn't contain enough information to allow you to uh, choose between those effectively. So it's, a, it's not a solvable problem. All right. Um, I don't see any visible faults in the top salt surface. How are faults integrated into layers? Of a, G, of a VALA model. So it's really a question, how are they integrated into layers in the GMSIS 3D model? And the answer is that faults are represented as best you can with a, a grid surface, so uh, which is to say not particularly well in the case of grids, or in a geosurface, um, they're, they're just another part of the surface. We don't actually have a separate representation for faults in GMSIS 3D or VALA. Once the model has been converted to a VAL version package, it's all voxels. And so a, uh, a fault is represented simply by differences in voxel cells across the boundary. Uh, how did you set the background densities? What happens if they are wrong? I think Taronish briefly addressed that. And the quality of your GMSIS 3D model directly goes into the inversion. So Whatever misfit remains in the GMSIS 3D model, uh, the Valum inversion will attempt to fit by adjusting the salt volume. So obviously, the better your, your starting model, uh, the better your result is going to be. Uh, so by background densities, you mean the surrounding sediment densities. Again, the better, better you can set them, whether by using the seismic velocities and converting those to densities, or well log or have you, the better your input densities are, the more realistic they are, the better results you're going to get from Val and any other inversion for that matter. Is there a way to start with a particular thickness of salt to initiate the modeling? So yes, you, in this particular example, we wanted to highlight Valum's ability to recover a salt thickness with no prior information about the salt thickness. But if you have a, a reasonable interpretation of the base of salt, that should be used as your input to the inversion. And the, the inversion will tend to produce a result that is close to your, your model of choice. So if you put in an initial salt geometry and that geometry fits the data fairly closely, then your result will more closely um, match that than if you don't start with such a model with the, that sort of a model.
lots more questions coming in. Um, are Kingdom 2D and 3D Seismic Horizon supported for import into a Vallum model? Yes, you can export GXF files from Kingdom, and so Oasis Montage can import them, and you can use them within GMSYS 3D. Can we invert on the surrounding density box set? At this time, no. The initial version of Vallum is focused on the base of salt uh, surface inversion, but that is one of the things we're considering. Vallum, Vallum is integrating GameSys 3D with the Voxy inversion engine, and so there are a lot of problems that are potentially taken on by this approach, and we will add other methods moving forward. All right, what happens when the sediment density outside in the contact zone is identical or lower than the salt velocity, I think we mean density. So Vallum cannot resolve the salt sediment boundary in the nil zone. There's no density information for the inversion to act upon. In this particular example, we actually have part of the salt body above and part below the nil zone, and the inversion successfully, thank you, Taronish, I don't know if you actually have the nil zone in there, um, but it runs through the middle of this. So we haven't solved the nil zone in all cases. We, well, we haven't tested a huge number of cases. In this particular case, because the resulting salt was completely below the nil zone, base of salt, it was able to solve it. If the subsalt boundary crossed the nil zone, I don't know that we, we would get a good result. So that's something that we still need to research. What is the maximum size of your voxel that you can run? Current implementation in this early testing phase, we're allowing 300 by 300 uh, dimensions of the voxels just to minimize the amount of time and effort we spend. But conceptually, the voxels can be much larger, 1,000 by 1,000 or larger. Depends on what resources we're willing to assign. Okay, and can Vallum be used to model depth of a volcanic intrusion or sill? So that that is... I guess you would call that a base of the salt or base of volcanic problem. Again, that's a problem that is suited for this sort of an approach, but we haven't yet optimized the GMSYS 3D to Voxy interface to deal with that particular problem. Can Vallum do a joint mag and grav inversion? Uh, not at this time. Um, we have had some discussions about this, and in practice, it often works out better to, uh, for instance, do separate inversions, do a, for instance, a magnetic depth to basement sort of inversion to recover your basement surface and then use that result in a gravity inversion. But currently, we don't combine the two in a single inversion. Can you compute on a non-flat or topographic surface for land data? This initial release of Vallum is strictly on a horizontal surface, but conceptually we should be able to handle drape surveys as well. We just haven't moved into that area yet. And I understand the Vallum is available in the current 8.3 Oasis version. Yes, the code was released with 8.3 and it's dependent on having it licensed. Uh, so if you're interested in this early stage, this uh, early adoption program, then you should contact Bruce Korn and discuss it with him because we are still seeking people who can help us work through uh, these initial stages. Well, Tom, actually, we've reached that time. So now it's, it's time to bring this to a close. And I want to thank everyone for participating. I want to thank Ian, Taronish, and Tom for, uh, for presenting and answering questions. If you're interested in follow-up, please reach out to us, either for the early adopter program for Valum or, or later on when it becomes commercially available. And with all that, I want to close and say we appreciate that you took your time today to learn about Valum, uh, to help you interpret your subsalt play, and thank you very much. Take care.